So in this video, we're going to talk about drawing a line in Desmos. Now this is um, a challenging thing if you don't know uh, anything about equations of lines. So again, a little disclaimer, uh, this is not a lecture, but more of something that gives you an intuition on how to draw these lines and maybe help you in writing an equation in decimals uh, so you can draw the line in decimals. Okay, so one way to um, finding the equation of a line is you might have a point, let's say on the Y, Okay, and it has that point and there's a line. Okay, and you'll see that I purposely draw these lines. They're going to be, if you see this, they're going to be diagonal and it's going to hit these corners. Okay. And the reason why I do that is because it's easier to read points on the line. Here, 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 and here. But like I was mentioning before, to draw a line, you need a point, and then and we'll call it, we'll have, we have a point, right? We have we need a point. And we also need something called the slope, which usually is represented by M. Okay. The slope is how steep a line is. So that's one way of discovering the equation of a line. The other thing that you can do to find the equation of the line is two points and we can call this point one and we can call this point two and as long as we have two points we can figure out what the slope is and the slope here is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 you can do that or you can do this thing where you rise over the run and I'll show you that too not only will you need the slope to find the equation of line when you have two points but you're also going to have to find the y-intercept and to do that you have this general form of the equation of the line which is important Yes, the previous one that I was showing you, where you have a point and a slope, you still need to put it in this form. So, um, so how does this work, right? Um, let's say, let's erase these things here, okay? How does this equation of the line work? How's it going to work for us? Let's say you want, so you have a box, right? So you have a box or a rectangle. Let's say a rectangle. You have a rectangle, right? And I'm going to draw a line. And this line on purpose will do something like this. We'll go somewhere here and then there's let's say that's the line that we want okay so what is the equation of this line hmm well there's a few things we can do first of all i purposely again am drawing uh this line I'm drawing it so that it will 
across the diagonals of each of these blue squares. Okay, this video is going to be doing that. And why do I do that? Because I know for sure that these points here exist on that line. Okay. Okay. Question is, what's the equation of this line? Uh, well, we need this form, right? Y is equal to mx plus b, right? Where we have the y-intercept and then the slope. So what is the slope? Well, let's see. Let's discover two points. Uh, let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five, right? Right here we got one, two, three, four, five. Don't worry about this dot right there. Okay. So it looks like this point here is going to be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, four, five. Okay. So that's going to be five, five. Remember, this comes in x and y. And um, well, we'll say this point right here. What's that? That's going to be 2, 2. Okay, this one's also x and y. Okay, so we got our two points. And let's see. What else do we need to know? Uh, well, we need to know... Um, if we're going to be using that formula, the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which point is going to be 2 and which point will be 1? It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent with the pair. So let's say this is my first point and then this is my second point. Okay, now we can put it into the formula. m is equal to y2, y2 is 5, take away, the formula t says take away, right? Formula says take away, y1, what's y1, 2, divided by what? x2, which is 5, right? Take away y, x1, right, which is 2. Okay, so y2 is 5, y1 is 2, subtraction in the middle, x2 is 5, and then subtract what? x1, which is 2. So this is 3 over 3, which is 1. So it has a slope of 1. Okay. Uh, well, what about the y-intercept, right? We have the slope now. Well, the y-intercept is not going to be too hard to find. We got y is equal to mx plus b, right? Um, pick a point. Let's say 2, 2, right? This one's x and this one's y. Let's plug everything in here. y is 2 equals m is 1 times 2 for x plus b. 2 equals 2 plus b b well let's subtract subtract 2 we, could, we have to oh yeah, isolate b right b is equal to what zero so the equation of the line here is going to be y is equal to 1x plus zero right because that's y is equal to mx plus b so m was one because we discovered it as one and b is zero because we discovered that and so to make this easier y is equal to x it almost looks very similar to the vertical and horizontal um, lines very similar okay and question is now this equation goes on forever okay this equation 
would go on forever. The thing is, where is it bounded? It's bounded here and here on one and on five. So it's bounded by what? X, right? Between one and five. Between one, between one and five. So X controls, right? How the equation spreads out. It starts at one and it just keeps going. Okay, that seems very complicated, doesn't it? A lot of steps. And there's more to this, as we will discover. So, let's say, let's draw another. Oops. Let's do that again. Go over here. I'll draw it. Time we'll draw it in red, and we want a line. Let's say this time the line um, is say it's down here somewhere, right? Let's choose a different color, black. Okay, let's say the line's over here somewhere. Okay. And we're gonna try to figure out what's the equation of this line. Well, we know it's a straight line and it's gonna have y is equal to mx plus b. That's the form. We know that this is y, this is x. We know that this point here is zero, zero, right? The origin, we need that, definitely. Hmm. And one thing about this line that I didn't do on, you know, I said I was gonna draw these on purpose. Note that this one is in the corner, but this one's not really at that, diagonal this one's even worse it's not except this one is this one's right there okay so this one the line doesn't so what i'm what am i talking about the line is not drawn this way where it goes diagonal 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 right that's a whole different line it goes in a different way okay so you have this dot that i can identify and i can identify this dot for sure i got two points okay and um all i need is two points so what's what's the coordinates for these points uh this is negative one negative two negative three negative four negative five negative six and this is negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, I got one point. So this one's x and y, first point. And this one is gonna be what, negative one, and then one, two, three. Okay, this is also x and this is y. This is my second point. All right, I already got my first point. Okay, let's find the slope. The slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Some people will say that this is the change in y over the change in x. The whole thing about the rise over the run, which we'll explain a little bit when I first uh, calculate the slope here. So the slope here is going to be y2, which is 3. Take away y1, which is negative 3. So I'm going to put parentheses. The subtraction is from the formula, and then you have the negative, right, from the 3. Divided by what? x2, 
which is negative one. Take away what? A negative six. Oh wow. And this is a one. Okay. Ooh, okay. Step by step, that's all we need to do. Two negatives make a what? A positive. Two negatives make a what? A positive. Okay. So that's going to be give me what? Six over wow. Six over five, right? That's a little over one. One and one fifth, right? Which is what? One and one point two zero, right? We don't necessarily need to know that. One point two zero. But we know that the slope is six over five. Hmm. But that's not the equation of the line, is it? So the equation of the line is what y is equal to mx plus b, right? Which is over here. Okay. So like we did previously, let's get a point. Let's get uh, negative one and three. This one's x, this one's y. And it's not necessarily the second point. We don't have to write that. It's just a point. And then we have the slope. Slope is six over five. So as long as we have a point and the slope, we can find the equation of the line. Like when we started talking about this. So y is three equals m, which is six over five. Oh boy. X is what? Negative one plus b. Okay. All right, we can do this. So this is three equals negative six over five plus b. All right? Uh, let's erase that. That's a five. Okay, so how do we move this guy over here? Well, that's going to be easy. We have to add 6 over 5, add 6 over 5, and then we get b is equal to 3 plus 6 over 5. Okay, well, we're going to do it old school here, All right? So 3 over 1 plus 6 over 5. We need the same denominators, so this is going to be, um, wow, what's the denominator? For between 1 and 5, if we want common denominators, well, we're going to have to multiply by 5 over 5. That's 15 over 5 plus 6 over 5, which is B. Use your fingers. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 over 5 equals b 20 over 5 that's 5 over 20 that's 4 and 1 fifth which is 4.20 but this is the answer 4 so that's 4 and 1 fifth okay so y is equal to what the slope is 6 over 5 x plus 21 over 5. Wow. That's the equation of this line. That's pretty amazing. So let's look at this. So um, if we think about this, it's uh, this is what? Uh, 4, 4.20, right? So this is 1, 2, three, four. So this line, if you think about it, will extend a little bit above four. And that's right. See that? This is the y-intercept right here. That one right there. There was no way we can extend this line and figure out that was the y-intercept. No way. We have to do this formula to figure that out. Okay. Um, another thing, this slope, right? So the slope is six over five, right? That's the change in y over the change in x. That's the rise over the run. What is that? Well, if I get this point over here, 
right? It says, I have, I will rise six and then run five. Look at this. I'm going to rise six. One, two, oops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Rise six and then what? Run. Run what? This way or that way? Well, we have to run this way because the points are over here. So run how much? Five. One, two, three, four, five. And there's that point. So we'll be doing some of that more often to find the slope. The slope can be found by doing the rise over the run without doing so much calculations. These calculations right here. Um, okay, but Desmos is going to want, you know, you need to control the line, right? It needs to be drawn from, from one point to another. So it's going to be drawn from here to here, right? And then it's going to be X. What's this value here? Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. Okay, negative six. Less than what? Negative one. Mm -hmm. So between negative six and negative one, the line will be drawn. Okay. Okay. If we go back to this one, right? Very quickly. And we extend the line. It hit exactly at zero. Because that's what it told us. The y-intercept is zero. Y-intercept is when our line crosses the y-axis. Okay. Let's try, let's try another one. Oh, let's go over here. Let's, uh, again, we'll do it maybe a little bit different. I don't know. We'll see how it just comes out. Okay. And let's pick a line. This time, let's say it looks something like this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to draw a line. We're going to have one that has a different slope. So far, the slopes have been what? Positive. Let's do a slope that's negative. And I'll tell you why it's positive and negative. Let's see from that point to this point. Okay. Let's see if that works. Okay. Well, actually, well, no, that's good. That's good enough for now. All right, so um, let's, uh, let's use blue. So we know this point, and we also know this point. Pretty straightforward. We know that this is y. We know this is x. We know that this is the origin, 0, 0, right? We know this is the equation, a straight line, so that's y equals mx plus b. We know this is the slope, right? This is the y-intercept, right? The y-intercept will cross, right? Or cross y. But we don't know what that is because it doesn't seem very obvious. Okay, so we do need the slope, right? And that's the same thing as the change in y over the change in x, right? You could find these points, use the formula for the slope, or you can do the rise over the run. Okay. So in this case, if we rise, how much are we going to rise? One, two, three, four. Right? We're rising four. And then we're turning left. Not right, but left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in this case, it's going to be a negative slope. 
Okay. Question is, why is it negative? Well, if we read, we usually read things from left to right, correct? We read from left to right. And if we look at this uh, line from left to right, right, if we see it this way, then we would have to start over here on the left and then go this way to the right. And what's happening? We are going down, right? Kind of strange, isn't it? By just looking at it. Look at this one. This line that we had over here, right? I'm going to draw it. I'm going to draw in a different color. Let's do green. Here's left. Here's right. Right? and it's going this way it's going up we read from left to right we started down here we're going to the right but and the line is going up okay again it's not this is not a lecture and it's not a technical lecture it's more kind of like a discovery what's this one is this one is this line going up or is this line going down? Mm -hmm. This is left. This one's right. It's going up. Okay. So this line is going down as a negative slope. If you don't like the calculation, if you don't like this whole idea of the rise of the run, just find the coordinates. Find the coordinates here x and y as well as here x and y this let's say this is the first point and this is the second point and then put it in to the um the slope formula and then you'll have a slope okay but we have the slope it's negative four or seven hmm what about the y-intercept okay what could that be well, let's see. Mm, I'm not sure. But we could put into the formula y is equal to mx plus b. We get a point. Okay, we're going to need a point. Uh, okay, this here's 1, right? And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know this is 1, 5. Okay, we got the point. 1, 5, this one's x, this one's y, right? We got the slope, negative 4 or 7, great. Let's pop, pop it in. y is what? 5 equals the slope, negative 4 or 7 times x, which is 1, plus b. So this is 5 is equal to negative 4 or 7 plus b. So we're going to add 4 over 7, add 4 over 7. Ooh, b is equal to 5 plus 4 over 7. I'm going to show you something unconventional, okay? Go ahead and do it regularly, find a denominator for 5 and so forth. But you could also do it this way. Put a 1 here. Do the following steps in this particular order. Do, do go this way. 5 times 7 is what? 35. 1 times 4? Four. 4. Notice that I wrote 35 on the left. 4 on the right. Divided by 1 times 7? Seven. 7. What's in the middle? A plus. That's what? 30 what? 39 over 7. That's B. Ooh. 39 over 7. Do you know your 7s? Let's see. 7 plus 7 is 14 plus 7. Oh, I don't know. 21. 21 plus 7 is what? 28 plus 7. Oh, boy. 14, 15, 35. Okay, 35. 7 goes into 39, 35 times. Um, no. 7 goes into 39, um, 
one, two, three, four, five times. Okay, it goes into five times, and what's the remainder? Four over seven. Why am I doing this? Why, why am I making it more complicated? Well, I want to see what the y-intercept is on the, on the graph. This is one, two, three, five. This is six. So it has to be between five and six. Five and four over seven, right? Right there. But there is no way we were able to find, there was no way we were going to be able to find the y-intercept based on the line that I was given to us, okay? Okay. So, the next question is, I want to draw it, I want to draw it in red. So what's the equation of this line? Well, the equation of line y is equal to mx plus b, y is equal to m m is what m is negative four seven x plus what's b 39 over 7 39 over 7 and it's bounded uh how x is going to be what from here to here right so it's going to be from 1 to this number. What's this? 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. Right? And there we go. Put it into decimals, and it's there. Hmm. Let's try another one. So... Let's try, we should draw another one. Let's move over here. Oh, that didn't work. That's okay. I'll try again. There we go. Um, oh no. Let's do that again. Go here. We'll get it right. Okay. All right. And let's um. Uh, let's draw a line, right? And this time, I'm gonna draw a line that's over here, and I will purposely. Uh, oops. That's. That's not a line, right? This is a line. I'm going to draw. Oh, come on. Let's see. Let me try this again. So, I'm going to draw a line. Oh, something like this close enough okay uh it's not super perfect actually let me draw that line again i'm trying to make it i'm trying to make the best line that i can draw okay that's good enough okay all right so this one's y this one's x right uh, this is the origin zero zero we need that i want to know what the equation of the line is hmm. what type of slope is that is that a positive slope or a negative slope well if we go from left to right this is going down right if we read from left to right, if we read from left to right, we know that if we're moving this way, we have to be going down, right? If we're traveling this way, we're traveling down, right? 
that's the whole idea about the rise of the run as well right it seems like when we run we have to fall or if we rise we turn left okay that's good enough for that now let's see so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the equation of the line without using the formula as much in terms of finding two points and you know look, looking for their coordinates and putting it into the slope formula I know that this point exists and it looks like this point exists as well okay so what I can do first of all I got lucky here this is the y-intercept which is negative 2 that's the y-intercept because it hits on the axes right the y-axis the line hits the y-axis at negative 2 so I got lucky right y is equal to mx mx let's draw that right mx plus b right the slope we know is negative 2 but what about the slope I think we can take care of that so we know that the slope is going to be a negative number but what is that negative number let's find out so we go 1 1 2 3 4 5 and then one, two, three, four, five. So five on the five on the y, right? Five on the y and five on the x. So that's five over five, which is negative one. Okay. So the equation is y is equal to the slope is negative one x minus 2 usually we don't write negative 1 we just write negative x in that case that's our formula and it's bounded x uh, will x will tell us how long the line is drawn it's drawn from here to here right we gotta be careful so this is what? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Right here is negative 5, so that's over here. And then this point, that's so it draw you draw it from here to here. That point is going to be what 1. So there it is. Use that for decimals. Okay, so there's a lot here that needs to be in your mind right so the thing is if you're drawing let's say something like a house right or something make sure that you're using the diagonals of the lines why because you can find this point and this point very easily and then this point and this point Right, and let's say it's right against this line right here, right? Let's say you were drawing this one's X, this one's Y, right? And you have your house, right? So this point right here, that's going to be a Y intercept for this line. And then this one, we go over here. That's the y-intercept for this line, right? And you know these two points, so you can find the equation of the line. You also know these two points, so you can find the equation of the line for that. And of course the box, these right here, these are what? Horizontal or vertical? That's right, vertical. Vertical lines, right? This one's a vertical line too. And this one's a what horizontal line so is this one okay 
that I just explained that very very quickly but if you go over the uh, that little portion you'll see it makes kind of sense but you have to like pay attention a little bit into the description so practicing the equation of line is going to be challenging um, but I think eventually you get used to the whole point and finding two points that you know are on the line find the slope then you find the y intercept you have the equation and then you and then you know how to control that line based on x and then you on you are on your way to drawing a line right that has a slope one other thing that I can tell you, I think um, I'm just I'm just thinking about this actually right now. Uh, let's see, I just thought of this right now. Uh, when you draw lines. When you have a line that's like this, we said that that was a slope is positive, right? And if we have a line that's going this way, right? The slope is going to be what? Negative, some negative number, right? But what's the slope of the line now let's pick another color. What's the slope of the line when it's flat? Oops, let's draw a better line, right? What's the slope of the line? For, the, for Well, what's the slope of the green line, that flat line? Well, first of all, that's one of those, what, horizontal lines, right? That's going to be y is equal to some number. In this case, it's going to be 1. one. So that's going to be y is equal to 1. If you don't know about horizontal lines, check out my video on that. But the question is, where's the slope? Right? And, and where's the y-intercept? Well, first of all, where is the slope and where is the y-intercept in an equation like this? y is equal to 1. Well, let's see. y is equal to mx plus b. Right? Is there an x in this? No. So that means it must have a slope of 0. 0 times x is going to be what? 0. So you have this equation, which is the horizontal equation. So all this time when you've been drawing horizontal lines, you've been looking at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to tell you what the equation of the line is, if there is no slope, now why wouldn't there be any slope? Because it's not going up and down, right? Right? The rise over the, the rise over the what? The rise over the run, right? You have to go up and down and then across, right? Well, you're not going up and down. It's flat. If you're not going up and down, that's zero, but you're still going backwards and forward some number well it's still the slope is still zero do you need to know that to understand this concept no but it might be interesting to see why it's what's occurring and then a line that's going up and down right we know that this is going to be x equals a number right you could say it's some type of you know, x-intercept in some ways, right? In this case, it's going to be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. This is negative 4. So x is equal to negative 4. That's the equation of the line. But in this case, the slope is undefined. Okay? Uh, y is equal to um, y2. Let's do that right y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In this situation where the line is what? Horizontal vertical, right? When the line is vertical, 
what happens is you have a number on the numerator, but in the denominator you have a zero, and that is going to give you undefined. So the slope is undefined. Uh, so you have to have a way to describe that, and that's the way to describe it by using x. One last thing before we stop here, because sometimes, you know, when you have a slope of 3 over 0 or a slope of 0 over 4, which one is undefined and which one's 0, right? If we have a fraction like 2 over 3, that means we have a circle, we divide the circle into three pieces, and we shade 2, right? Uh, we have something like 3 over 4. We have a box, right? It's split into four pieces, and you shade it, what? Three times. Cool. So the slope of 0 over 4. Okay, you have four boxes, right? And then how many do you shade? None. So how many do you take away? None. Okay, if the slope is 3 over 0, how many boxes do I make? Do I create? Uh, none. And how many do you shade? 3. Mm, that doesn't make any sense. It's undefined. Okay, so hopefully that helps you um, when you see fractions like this. Right? And figure out which one has a zero slope and which one has an undefined slope. But the lesson was all about slopes, right? And we know now that the slopes have different direction, positive, negative, zero, undefined. We know that if we draw uh, pictures, it's good to have it near the axes so that we can probably get nice edges and corners where we can identify points, right? Sometimes when we have lines, we don't need formulas, but all we need to do is find, we get lucky because we know where the y-intercept is and we know how to do the rise over the run, which is not an easy thing if you don't know how to do that. Other times, um, the equations can get a little bit complicated, even though you know the two points, right? The problem is, is that when you start doing the math, it's a little more challenging. And again, the same idea. The math is a little bit challenging here as well. And in this case right here, we had a structure. And fortunately, the line went through these points. And we noticed that. You'll find out that if, it, if the line, right, if the line goes through the diagonal, you'll find out that the slope is going to be 1. In this case, it's positive 1. It's going up, right? And then, of course, if the line's going down on the diagonal, but it has to go through each square, right? Diagonal, diagonal, diagonal. The slope is going to be negative 1. Just a tip um, on, on that. So good luck on drawing a line in decimals. Wow. Is it still recording? An hour. Wow.